In 1993, Joe Doucette is an unsympathetic advertising executive, loathed for his alcoholism and hedonistic tendencies which made him lose some deals with his clients. One time at the office, his estranged wife calls, angry that he neglects his three-year-old daughter Mia. They both had a heated argument, and after bouts of verbal abuse aimed at his wife, he spirals into an episode of drinking, vomiting, and passing out. Afterward, Joe continues to walk on an empty street until he finds a Korean lady, selling various charms and toys. Joe picked a toy duck as a gift for Mia. Finally, he ends up at the bar owned by his only friend, Chucky. He refuses to let him enter due to his intoxicated state. Seeing that he won't budge, Joe walks away until he spots a woman sporting a yellow umbrella under the rain. When Chucky exits the bar for Joe, he finds the toy duck on the pavement, with no sign of Joe. Joe wakes up and finds himself in a small hotel room under lock and key for no apparent reason. He is provided for and fed mostly Chinese food from under a hole made in the door. Every once in a while, the room is flooded with gas so that his captors can intervene while he's passed out. In his solitude, Joe has frequent hallucinations and outbursts. He made friends with a mouse, only to have it and its children served as his next meal. One day while watching television, he heard a news broadcast of his wife being raped and murdered. All the forensic evidence collected by the authorities points to Joe, making him the prime suspect thanks to the false evidence created by his captors. He is devastated by the loss and even tries to take his own life. As the years go by, Joe learns through a crime show on television that his daughter has been adopted by another couple and following her passion as a cello player. This inspires Joe to change and better himself, abstaining from alcohol and training his body. During this time, he writes numerous letters to his daughter and carves lines for each year that he has been held captured on his wrist. A man named Cheney watches his every move through cameras. Twenty years follow and Joe Doucette makes plans to escape but is suddenly gassed and released to the outside world. He wakes up in a box that includes a cell phone with a picture of his daughter and a timer counting down. Someone carrying a yellow umbrella catches his attention. In his thoughts, it could have been the street vendor who sold trinkets to him twenty years ago. Joe chases after her and follows her to a field. The players thought he was harassing her so they tried to beat Joe but failed. Following the trail shortly after, he meets a nurse who takes care of homeless people, Marie Sebastian, a former drug abuser. She gives Joe her card just in case he ever needs her help. After 20 years, he returns to his friend Chucky to ask him for help. He tells him everything that happened. He then receives an anonymous phone call that mentions to Joe that he can earn forgiveness. Joe is dead set on finding his captor and getting his vengeance, employing Chucky's help to research all of those that he had wronged in hopes of finding a clue. He thought of his former boss and other associates, but no one qualified. Joe passes out again and Chucky calls Marie's number. She comes over to help, finds the stack of letters Joe has written and reads them for herself. Joe awakens and he is infuriated at Marie for reading those letters not meant for her. She agrees to help Joe find his daughter. Joe visited restaurants to sample out their dumplings to look for the same familiar ones he had back in captivity. After identifying the correct restaurant, Joe follows a guy picking up a large order and locates the prison, gaining entry after killing a few guards. He finds Cheney and ties him up to torture him, cutting off a few pieces of his neck before pouring in salt. Afterward, Cheney spits out that he was only the caretaker of the facility and hands him a tape that has the voice of the man who ordered his captivity recorded. On his way out, Joe fights off numerous guards but then passes out from his wounds, only to be rescued by a mysterious stranger who dropped him off at Chucky's. After recovering from his wounds, Joe receives another anonymous call from someone who taunts him further. Afterward, Joe notices that the call was not blocked and he calls the number back. A customer at Chucky's bar guarded by someone had their phone ring and Joe immediately tried to attack them, only to be stopped by the bodyguard. The stranger reveals that he is a man called Adrian, who challenges Joe to find out who he is and why he was in prison. As proof, Adrian reveals his involvement in the murder of Joe's wife, a confession letter with his signature, and a suitcase of diamonds if Joe succeeds. Most importantly, Adrian will lead Joe to his daughter and he will take his own life if Joe finds out the truth about the whole conspiracy. He then leads Joe to Marie's house, where Cheney and his gang was about to assault her. They beat up Joe but before Cheney can torture him as Joe did to him, Adrian interrupts with a call and convinces Cheney not to do it by paying him off with a huge sum of cash. Badly shaken from what happened, Marie still helps Joe by using Shazam and finding out that the caller's ringtone was the anthem of his old prep school, Evergreen Academy. Taking that as a big hint, she and Joe leave by car, closely watched by Adrian. 
They both track down Edwina Burke, the headmistress of Evergreen Academy. Marie distracts her while Joe sneaks behind Edwina's apartment. She tries to convince the headmistress behind Joe Doucette's innocence, and that someone from his old school might be trying to frame him for the murder of his wife. She learns that Joe met his wife back in that school, that he was a selfish child back then and that he might have made some enemies. Meanwhile, Joe finds a yearbook and finds Adrian's name and picture there, learning that he is in the same year as both him and Chucky. They plan to infiltrate the school by evening. Meanwhile, Chucky learns that Adrian once had a hospital built in dedication to his sister who has passed away from the internet. Upon knowing this, he remembers something and immediately leaves Joe a message stating that it is all about the whore. Unfortunately, Adrian intercepts the message and heads over to Chucky's bar in anger to kill him. Joe and Marie go into a motel to tend to Joe's wounds, and they end up making love. They are unaware that Adrian watches via camera. That evening, Joe and Marie break into the prep school, finding evidence that Adrian and his sister enrolled there. After hearing Chucky's message, Joe remembers that he used to harass Adrian's sister during his bullying days. Later, during a school party, he witnessed Adrian's sister having intercourse with a man in the garden. He simply assumed it was a teacher at the school and had mentioned the girl's promiscuous reputation to Chucky. In the school's library, Joe and Marie research newspaper articles. Apparently, Adrian and his wealthy family moved to Luxembourg within a year, where a great tragedy happened that killed the entire family, but left Adrian severely wounded. Joe identifies the man who was having intercourse with Adrian's sister as the girl's father. Outside the prep school, Joe and Marie find a box in their car, which contains Chucky's severed tongue. Shocked, they return to the motel. Joe leaves Marie in safety, and leaves to confront Adrian, despite Marie's pleas not to go. Joe goes to Adrian and after a short fight with his bodyguard whom he kills, he tells Adrian that he solved his riddle. Adrian blames Joe for the tragedy that befell his family and therefore imprisoned him. It wasn't until this evening that Joe realized that the scandal involved an incestuous relationship. Adrian responds that it runs even deeper than that. His beloved father was a pedophile who had separate sexual relationships with both him and his sister. They were very happy with it, but when the scandal spread throughout the school, the sister's reputation was destroyed, so they were forced to move to Luxembourg. Finally, the father killed his wife, daughter, and himself, leaving Adrian severely wounded. Adrian says that he lost everything as a consequence of Joe's actions, but keeps his promise and takes Joe to see Mia. Joe learns that the crime show he saw on TV during his imprisonment was staged, and shown only to him. That Mia, he saw in that show as a professional actress, recruited by Adrian at a young age. Even the last picture of her bruised face was faked. Joe is furious and physically assaults Adrian, forcing him to take him to his real daughter. Adrian simply comments that Joe never asked the right question. Instead of asking why he was imprisoned, he should have asked why he was set free. Adrian then continues to show pictures of the real Mia. Adrian had made sure that she was raised after her mother's death, and grew up as Marie. He staged everything so that she would get addicted and develop a father complex, so that when she met Joe, she would take pity on him, finally culminating in the two having intercourse as torture to Joe. Joe is devastated by the news, as Adrian picks up his phone in order to call Marie. Joe pleads with Adrian not to reveal the information to Marie, instead offering himself to Adrian to do as he pleases. Adrian simply states that he has no desire to kill Joe, since he has Joe exactly in the position where he always wanted him so that he could feel Adrian's pain. With his revenge complete, Adrian shoots himself. Joe uses Adrian's diamonds to try and make things right, with Marie, Mia and even Cheney, offering him money and arranging to be re-imprisoned. Joe sends Marie a letter along with some of the diamonds and the duck toy, stating that he has done something terrible, she should forget about him and try to find her happiness again. Joe finds himself back in his old prison, with a mysterious grimace on his face. And this is how the movie ends. Please don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, thanks see you for the next one.